Hey kiddo, it's Handsome Jack here. You're listening to Start Replay. Pushy Snuggle Bites is my main squeeze. I thought I would take some time away from battling Dr. Nefarious and introduce a brand new Start Replay podcast. Presumably because you have half a brain in your head. <laughs> okay, kisses. Hello, I'm Josh from StartReplay.com, and you are listening to the 11th episode of Start Replay, the podcast. And I've got Joel Chapman with me tonight. Hello. And I've got Freya Spears. Hello. His lovely companion. Uh, We're going to be talking a little bit about the BAFTAs, the awards that came from the BAFTAs, and the controversy surrounding the game of the year being Mm -hmm. Destiny. Um, But first of all, let's, let's acclimatize. Boys and girls, uh, what have you been doing recently? Um, what have I been mm, doing? What have we been doing for the past two and a well, half hours? Um, More. trying to record a video, but yeah. we'll, we'll skip past that. Yeah, we've, we'll, we've got past that. Yeah. What have you been playing, Josh? Oh, what have I been playing? Well, yes. I've been playing um, Far Cry 4 Yeti DLC. It does look amazing, actually. It, if, Which if is not pretty a little fun. scary. Probably too scary for me. Yeah, no, it's, it's quite scary, especially since I'm wearing my headset and I can hear them running from behind. And I, I was literally, like, shrieking out in my room. Going, <laughs> ah, 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 and, and then I'd, I, it would just be terrible. Absolutely terrible. It was really, really fun. It's great because you get a new area to explore. And I love the open-ended gameplay of Far Cry 4. In the sense, you can really approach any situation exactly how you want, you know. Yeah. So there was this, there was this area where I'd, I'd get this whole, like, gang of enemies, and I could spot them with my camera, log them on the map, and then I tried doing the whole thing in stealth. So using arrows, my knife, and uh, using animals by using bait to kill my enemies. I near enough did it, which was really satisfying. Um, so I've been playing that, and I'm playing lots of other like games. I'm trying to think of a notable one I've been playing that I might have got sent to me. But I can't really think of anything. Um, I've what got lots of DLC. Oh, oh we, yeah, we also... I'll talk about what we did recently with uh, Warner Brothers. But Freya, what have you been playing? Grand Theft Auto Heists has oh, been yeah. a big thing. Heists, but I haven't played that yet. Kind of when you can get on them, which, mm. as we found out, wasn't exactly easy. No, it doesn't seem... Did you have a good t- time in the end? Yeah, we haven't done the actual finale We yet. had a good time... <laughs> Apart from the fact that there is a certain skill gap, and so we sent Richard and Freya onto <laughs> one mission, and they died repeatedly, which I will show in the in the video in the edit. Yeah. It's quite hilarious. <laughs> um, so it took us a while, but we've got to the part where we'll be doing the final heist soon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a whole video in itself. It should be fun. But generally, I think the heists have been, apart from the connection issues, I think they've been done amazingly well. Yeah. Um, and I think, to be honest, it's probably worth the wait. There are a few little bugs and glitches here and there, particularly around the connection things. But I love like the cutscenes, and I like how uh, Lester talks a lot, and and how he he also links back to how you can't talk. So he's always mm-hmm. going, yeah, "This is the last really time funny. I ever hire a bunch of mutes <laughs> and stuff like that." So it's um, yeah, I think they've done it really Make well. Make it relatable. That's good. And yeah, I'm I'm good. looking forward to getting more stuck in. Nice. Yeah. I don't think we succeeded in because we were going to try and do the uh, for the I think it's ten thousand, uh, no, was it ten million dollar? No, that's it, not ten thousand. Ten ten million dollar challenge. Was. Ten thousand dollars <laughs> for this heist. <laughs> um, it was completed with the same team. Don't die, which we did until the fourth uh, setup, and then me and Rich repaired together, and that was the wrong decision. Um, what is it? And doing them all in order, doing them all with all the setups and everything. Wow. Yeah. So quite hard but i think you can um you can go back and and just choose like four people and just go from start to finish yeah and do it it's not you like don't have to like you don't die and then you're like oh shit i can never do it again you can reset it and go back and do it which yeah. is cool that's the only thing with the first because there's a yeah. one million dollar bonus for doing it first time i think you get so oh, nice. whenever you finish it you just get another million dollars on top of it which so if you win like a heist um can someone like f you all over and then just take the money and run away you have um, to decide beforehand. Kind of, um, because as a, as the leader, you put down. So I was the leader in our one, and I put down forty k of my own money. And now at the end of each mission, my three employees, Richard, Frere, and Theo, um, would then receive a bit of money at the end of each mission. That was basically from my bank because I put down my forty k. Right. So and Joel it came didn't out get anything. Yeah. I didn't get anything. And then it gets to the end, and as far as I know, the leader can then choose how he divvies it up however he can't take 100% because the people have to accept 
the dividends so they have to agree the price so when it gets to the end you can't just go okay I'm taking 80 and you you guys are having seven each or whatever that mm. doesn't quite work yeah you, you have know to what all, I mean you right. all know your share before you ready up so you can yeah. see it and, okay. and you, all so know your you can well. technically kind of fuck people over a bit you can be like bitches I'm taking 70 you're taking 10 <laughs> each um, that's how it is and I'm not readying up until you go but apart from that generally they have to accept well for some of them it is kind of because i've i've done one before we didn't actually finish it um but it's it was yeah 40k for the setup right and then in all the other mish like setup missions we got at least like 23k each yeah so sometimes it actually it does kind of work out at 60 percent for the setup oh, sorry 60 percent for the setup person and for the leader and then just share it between the rest because that was kind of worked out was what fair like nice. it just didn't yeah it was seemed a bit like overpowered but then when you think about how much you got mm. in the previous sound I mean were they actually enjoyable the heist oh yes. yeah definitely yeah. yes they've done them really well and it's <sighs> really cool that you can do you think they've been worth the wait of a year and a half <sighs> um uh, well now that they've come they're as good as they are yeah I'm happy but when as you... long as you come that's all that matters <laughs> when you look back to it right Freya <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> you finally came <laughs> that's what she said okay <laughs> God. Like Sorry. I was saying, <laughs> when you look back on it now, you kind of think, was it worth that wait? I don't know. It's hard to tell, but I feel I'm like just glad they're here finally. I, I'm glad they didn't rush it because, like, with the online and it not that working, was a yeah, that was a total disaster. And like that, we have seen a lot of examples of disasters over the past year. And I feel like, yeah, it was worth waiting for it and doing it properly. Good. Well, I look forward to actually playing it sometime yeah. in the future. <laughs> and because this is a Top Gear themed uh podcast not really <laughs> but i'm gonna <laughs> do the, the news and it's good news uh <laughs> stupid stupid people stupid people sorry <laughs> stupid people. stupid stupid sorry good news yeah, um what's good news battlefront trailer will be coming shortly apparently a gameplay one apparently next month <gasps> april <sighs> yeah. it'll be what they showed at um was it e3 uh, at the no, uh, it'll be, it'll be um, more than at that. the like, behind closed doors thing. Yeah, behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. Of course, not three. I think so. Yeah, it'll be it'll something, be that, something that. like that. Yeah, yeah. Like no, so it was so. the same for like Grand Theft Auto and everything. When people first saw that, mm. and it was all the like the main people at GameStop or, or so, and all like the shops. Yeah. Who got to see these things before anyone else, and and then of course like about a month later they they show everyone. So yeah. I think we Should will. Should be good, yeah. Should be quite I'm cool. I'm probably really going to start touching myself. Joel, as can soon you record yourself out? watching the trailer? Joel reacts to. Joel reacts <laughs> to <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> 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 I felt heart murmurs as I was doing that. Oh, God. Literally just explosion. <laughs> Joel just <laughs> flames. <Joel's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Nice. That is going to be so good, that game. Yeah. Oh, my God. Although, hopefully, it's going to come out this year because Uncharted 4 has been delayed. Oh, yeah, dun, I saw. Dun, dun, dun. For next year, 2016. Which isn't really a surprise. I know, Freya, it won't matter to you too much because no, you're Xbox-related. Exactly. Um, Joel, have you played the Uncharted games? Yes, Josh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, Uncharted 2 <coughs> is my favourite. Ah, uh, yeah, Uncharted um, 2 is amazing. I touched Uncharted well. 3 a bit. I didn't complete it. Oh, right. um, Uncharted 2 and I played Uncharted 1 as well I did, got about halfway through that yeah. but Uncharted 2 I properly stuck at and I absolutely loved it even to the point where I was playing a heck out of multiplayer as well well I think it makes sense that it's releasing in 2016 because it, it just seemed a bit too soon you know one of the like mm. probably biggest blockbusters that's going to hit the console in the entirety of its lifespan <laughs> probably yeah. one, of the, one of the biggest and it's coming out you know shortly after they announced it at E3. Well, not shortly, but they announced it at E3 last year and then they were like, it's coming out next year. Why well, don't... Yeah. But have you watched the like 30-minute gameplay of it? Yeah, no, it looks amazing. Well, I I sat there and I Chromecasted it to my TV downstairs and I sat there and I reclined. I just had like a nice cold glass of Dr. Pepper in one hand <laughs> and my Always. hands down my pants in the others. In, the, in my other hand <laughs> <laughs> my hands are my hands in my, in my other hands two hands I have. Um, <laughs> and I just sat there and I was blown away and I, I yeah. thoroughly like normally gameplay trailers get quite boring after maybe five ten minutes but you yeah, sit no, it, there it does look amazing and each bit was different and it was all diverse and the whole map and the gameplay and the sort of way you could kill people and get around oh my god it's so good yeah it looks great um, I, I, you know I, I respect 
any developer for delaying their game in favor of the quality and mm. to really just push it and push it and push it. And they couldn't recently, you know, they've been said they're going to try and hit 60 frames per second like they did with, with the remaster for Last of Us. Uh, but they've been having trouble doing that and it's you know they're only going to not do it if it all like it's not surprising after actually watching it and seeing just simple things how like how going on. diverse the jungle is <laughs> oh, and, yeah. and how thick and dense it is and, and the render distance as well mm. is really nice they like the thick and dense quality <laughs> of it don't you Joel? I love it <laughs> um, thicker the better so yeah hopefully Battlefront's going to come out this year um I I'm have not, faith in you, Dice. I'm not, I'm not too sure I how. Do. I'm not too sure how many other games are going to get delayed. Any mm. other spring to mind that might get delayed to next year that you're looking forward to this year? Oh, I've got to say, Joel, um, I have put your name down for the PC beta of Rainbow Six Siege <gasps> because oh my uh, Microsoft's come to us saying they may be able to provide us with an opportunity. Wow. Oh yes, I love you. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. Oh, that game. So cool. I should have probably. I should have probably like bargained that as something for you to do the video review for the headset. <laughs> You'll get into siege. Oh, get into the, oh, oh, this headset. I'd have done it straight, mate. <laughs> that is Holy so cool. shit! Yeah. I can't when, wait. When for is that, that due out? Twenty uh, fourth to the twenty fourth of March till the third, I think, of April. Or something. Oh wow! What the That's beta? That's so mm -hmm. cool. That's a long time for a beta. That's pretty awesome. Alpha. Yeah. Alpha. Alpha. Yeah. Closed alpha. Wow. Mm -hmm. Fuck. I'm, that is so Can I cool. film it? I guess I, it will depend, won't I'll, it? Uh, I don't know. I suspect so. I, I there don't might know. Be, you probably can. There might be an embargo, though. Um, yeah, I expect. Because we haven't seen any of that no. since E3. Well, yeah, they've got the basic stuff, stuff, and that's about it. Mm. But yeah, I'm going to record every second of that. that so I'm really so intrigued. Cool. Um, wow. So yeah, hopefully Rainbow Six will actually make it this year. Um, and mm. We've got quite a few surprises coming up in the next few months in the lead up to E3, which I can't believe is nearly here again. Yeah, that's gone quickly. It's like two and a half months, three months actually now. It's yeah, going. the more I think about it, the more uh, completely going off topic. But the more I think about it, the more Valve really need to start announcing something. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've, well, they've got so much stuff they can we do. We were discussing this in the last podcast. I yeah, think. and but the, they, like the beginning too. of this year, they've just been focusing on like the VR headset that they just mm. released with the HTC, machines. which I think is cool because I think this might should be a time I buy a Steam machine. I'll get a Steam machine with uh, Valve's HTC VR headset. The um, and, Hive, um, I believe it's called. Yeah, something like that. And then I'll, uh, yeah, be all, be all set my little like PC corner, oh. gathering dust but at times. It's but. it's like perfect for you because you're not someone who's going to have a big custom PC sat in the corner. Yeah. You just want something slim, like a console. Yeah, no. So that's essentially yeah, what I, a Steam I machine is. It does the same as a console, but you've got the whole access to the Steam yeah. library sort of thing. Which is pretty brilliant, yeah. So you that's can awesome. sit there and, and go, oh, it's just going to be great. And you can play Counter Strike with us. Yeah. Yay. That's Dialogue. what bloody <laughs> Valve would need With to my do. Steam controller. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I saw yeah. pictures of, like early um, people mocking up and they were they had their fingers on the, um, the big circle pads. things and they Weird. turned it into like portals. So they're putting <laughs> their fingers through and it's coming out some other side. <laughs> side. <and laughs> you can, can you like plug a mouse and keyboard you can yeah, plug no, you, a there's lots PS4 of PS4 controller stuff in. you can do really I believe cool. because you can plug a PS4 controller in and a PS3 controller to a PC mm. same with a oh, so Xbox 360 thing. controller um, and I'm obviously I'm going to get a Nintendo 64 a... controller out plug in <laughs> <laughs> a Wii U a little boomerang oh my god yeah um, yeah what else has been going down gaming wise exciting to talk about except from the BAFTAs mm. Battlefield is actually already out now yeah, in the, in the US. Today, Came out it? today. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people. Um, I've seen Hard more line. bad than good in in really? on Twitter. It's great. We've played it. it we will already be know really it's cool. great. <laughs> you best. Uh, we best be getting some PS4 copies, Josh. Um, hopefully, if, some videos. If, if EA are um, kind enough, we'll, um, we'll see. EA will do. will do some favors. Um, I'm not going to specify what sort of favors. All we can say is that Joel will be on his knees. Um, um, at yeah. your door waiting <laughs> for a copy <laughs> of the game holding his hands begging, out innocently begging for a copy of the game <laughs> because I'm too cheap to buy one yeah <laughs> pretty much uh, and, and console games are fucking expensive it's one I don't know what platform to get it on because mm. I feel like PC, PC has always been what I get Battlefield on because I bought Battlefield 4 on Xbox oh it must have been Xbox 360 oh, I was going to say you need to get on PS4 <laughs> you yeah, don't I don't PS4, know just <laughs> buy a PS4 for it um, yeah I think I'd probably because nobody I know is going to get on Xbox One and from what I've seen of it it looks a lot worse on Xbox One than it does on PS4 Ooh, and PC well then you need to buy a PS4 
That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might, yeah, as well. but, yeah. <laughs> might as well. Um, uh, yeah. No, it's, I think it's going to be good. It's yeah. I think fine. It, yeah. Battlefield is best on a um, PC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised at how much fun I did actually have on PS4 mm-hmm. as well. Because, to be fair, when I've played it in the past, I've been alone on console, and I think that's a big mm. sort of factor. Yeah, it is. When you're with someone, it's a lot better. Well, we used to have full squads on Battlefield. It's a bit like sex, great. you know? <laughs> when you're with someone, it's a lot better. Yeah. It's like when you're not. Uh, it's not <laughs> so good. <laughs> How's that going for you, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. How's that actually it's working? fantastic. Um, Claptrap is coming to town soon. Aww. Claptrap's coming to in town. In about a week and a half, he will be a here. A week and a half? Yep. Yeah. He will be here, what? ladies and gentlemen. And I've got the most I've tune. got the most radical video series planned ever. And I'm gonna need all your help. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited it's for it. It's gonna be so cool. Now I've got all this like this intro planned in my head of at the start of each episode, it's gonna be like this like you know, like really chirpy <laughs> intro and just like me and Clapped Out doing all these different things. Um, and like the first episode will be like me ordering him I'll get a knock at the door and he'll just be I'll look outside and because I, I look outside I look left and right I can't see anything and I close the door I just say hey minion and I'll open the door again and I look, look down and I'm like oh <laughs> like, there he is <laughs> and just all this other stuff you know and, and oh, that's gonna be so I think nice. it's going to be amazing oh that's brilliant I'm on East holidays then so <sighs> I'll definitely no, have before that we need to know a postman what I don't know yeah. we could do something cool around a postman like you know when um, uh, you have so a postman puts post through your letterbox yeah. and you have a dog it's like rah, 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 and it starts <laughs> ripping up the post as it comes through they do like ah yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Clap trap <laughs> could come along and destroy the post <laughs> yeah that could work kind of not <laughs> it would be amazing or he could or maybe the when the postman to... knocks at the door to have something signed we just have clap trap there and we open the door and we just run away and then we just have Claptrap there just doing lots it's of different like voices. like the FedEx man. Yeah, he's like, oh, they're coming out of the wall, Sphinxters. <laughs> Sphinxters. Yeah, that would probably freak anyone out. Right? Yeah. But Borderlands cool. Remastered, that is out next week as well. So yeah, Looking lots of stuff to that. coming up. And to the meat of this podcast, of course, I went to the video game BAFTAs recently as press uh, to interview the winners and presenters of the video game BAFTAs. And it was really, really cool met lots of awesome people uh, talked to the composer on uh, the Sherlock TV series and about what he's doing next uh, which is quite fun and yeah anyway met lots of different people and at the end of this podcast there will be a compilation uh, of people I've talked to from the interviews that I conducted I just need to go through all the audio and cut it up but the most controversial piece of news that came from it is that Destiny won game of the year dun, go dun, guys dun. talk what do you no. think no um rigged that's all i'm gonna <laughs> say about the video game baftas someone's rigged it someone at bungie or act probably activision yeah, they've probably got more money like they've probably gone to the people that run it and given them a mad check probably a blank check and said yeah um we made so much money from this game it cost us a bunch of money but we got it all back so we sold so many copies and it was so overhyped that we've written you a blank check all you have to do is make us win game of the year award and it'll be happy days that's my suspicion does anyone know what else was on there for game of the year i've forgotten i, I think no it was idea. something like uh shadow i didn't Mordor follow and... it all, to be honest shadow... really shadow Mordor didn't... that was good though yeah i'd say shadow can someone Mordor google would've... it yeah let's all google it if you google, google that for our, and me and uh, joel can just uh, discuss a little bit more about the 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 destiny getting game of the year nonsense it's alright, you can drop your popcorn, don't worry. <laughs> um, it's, it's quite funny because when I was in the press room, as soon as it was announced, because I was on one end of the press room interviewing everyone, so I didn't know who was winning what or what was going on. So it would only be until people got dragged along to the end and we were interviewing them as to what they were doing here, basically. And as soon as Destiny won Game of the Year, the whole press room just like threw stuff on the ground. It's like, no, no! <laughs> oh my <laughs> no! god! It was so this funny. This can't be. And we're like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, Destiny won. Now, I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world, because to be fair, even the people I was talking to there, they, everyone had a, a pretty good time with Destiny, and we put a lot of hours into it. Um, and hell, oh, South Park wasn't even mentioned no. for Game of the Year. And I named that my Game of the Year. It's much better. 
Um, well, in, in my opinion, but I did enjoy last, Destiny. Well, where was the Last of Us remastered? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, I've got the list up. So obviously, so, Destiny yeah. was the winner. Yeah. Monument Valley, Mario Kart 8. Mario Monument Angel. Valley is a mobile game, really nice yep. one. Dragon Age Inquisition and Alien Isolation. To be honest, it was a pretty nice weak field. It was a weak, yeah. It was Alien Isolation. Weak Alien Isolation. That was a Alien hit Isolation. Wonder, I think. It's amazing. 2014 was a shit year for video games. <laughs> yeah, it promised so, so yeah. much. It and was it, so, it seemed like such a good year. Is Valley the one with like the pillars and the person yeah, walking around? Yeah, it's the little stuff. woman with the dress. Ah, that was featured in that House was... of Cards Season 3. Shut up, spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> he just plays that game at but one that time. One, that oh, one, that one. I, I notice in House of Cards there's quite a lot of product placement. Yeah, yeah Because um, in the... <laughs> I remember it's like episode four of season one or something. He goes into um, Peter Russo's house and Peter Russo's kid is playing on a PS Vita and there's this 10 second clip, really cringy, where Kevin Spacey goes, is that a PS Vita? And starts playing it and holds it up to the camera and starts playing it right in front of it. He's like, I ought to get one of these. Yeah, no, of course, because he's, he's quite a gamer, isn't he? Um, he's yeah. playing like on PS4. So it did fit in that sense. No, I think But there was a quite huge funny. product placement yeah. uh, with the PS Vita. Yeah. I wonder if it sold any. Monument Valley did win British Game in 2015, though. Did not know that. What? In what? It won in the category British game. Oh, right, yes, British. No, Monument Valley, if, if I'm correct, because there was a huge bunch of people. like, who are they? And it's from Monument Valley, and it, it didn't ring a bell at the time. And they kept going in and out of the award ceremony because they kept winning awards, and we didn't get to interview them. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, mobile handset as well. They, I was um, so close to buying I should have asked them that. That would have been kind of cool. It's like £2.40 on the Google Play Yeah, store. I think I might buy that, actually. <laughs> Talking about it now. Um, um, so I'm yeah, Alien Isolation, man. I would have if, out of that list. That would have been my game of the year. I'm very, very surprised that in Family Game of the Year, my, Minecraft, Minecraft won it instead edition. of Little Big Planet Three. Yeah, no, that was um, that was a shame. Minecraft's great, but I feel like that's kind of like what we said. We kind of cheated a little bit for our game of the year, saying GTA no, but surely my like Minecraft Family Game. I'd get it if it was like children's game of the year, mm. but family game. Who plays Minecraft with their family? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you um, play it on your own with your fucking Swedish friends over the <laughs> internet. It's like no. Yeah, it was a bit bizarre, and it was a it shame was a to see um, uh, Sarah, who I, I kind of know at the Sony side, miss out with her team there not winning. Uh, so that was a real shame. Um, but I did interview. I did talk to like the group. And there were oh, a bunch yeah. of Scottish people and other to people. To be fair, there. do you think? Like, oh, right, yes, yeah, so this Scottish. Well, you'll hear it in an interview later. <laughs> do you Not... think LBP should have won it though? Really? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Think it was, it but it's a bit bugged at the it start. It was, it was some weird. Yeah, it was some weird results and and weird categories. You know, you had like best sports categories. game and Oli Oli Two won it instead Corrupt. of FIFA. Corrupt, <laughs> rigged, rigged. <laughs> there is persistent game. Yeah. 2015. So, what? League of Legends won that. Yeah. There was, there was some really was up for nomination for that. Yeah, what is re- this? really, really, really like weird. Years old. Um, yeah, Ollie Ollie won sport instead of FIFA. And we were talking with them. We were like, "So, uh, Ollie Ollie sequel? Is it Ollie Ollie Ollie? Was <laughs> 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 it Ollie Ollie? Ollie Ollie Ollie? Oi oi oi! Yeah, apparently they were calling it that at one point but <laughs> because of the because of what you just said there. They they stopped short, <laughs> but. I mean, regardless of what was on the list or what was nominated, what would yeah. you have had for your game of the year? What would you have wanted to win? Uh, I, I know it's what. Wow, well, that's a dragon bird. <laughs> oh, I can crunch into the mic now. Oh, that's so good. Oh gosh. Um, what from what was on the list or just um any? Because uh, tr- the list is shit. Fuck the list. <laughs> I don't. Know. Okay, on the list first. On the list. Okay, <laughs> let me get let me get the list back up. So, I so it's Alien Isolation. There's Mario um, Kart, Dragon Age. Mon- okay, Monument Valley, Mario Kart Eight. Shadow of Monument Valley. So you can say Mario Kart Age, Mario Kart Age, uh, Dragon Age Eight. The only one that I actually properly played is Destiny. Right. And so yes. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just completely contradicted what I was going to say. So Destiny. Um, from the list, <laughs> one that didn't win, maybe. <laughs> FIFA 15. That's it's not, not even on, on the list. list. <laughs> not on the list. But um, to be honest, what was the game I'd have last quite year? Liked... Were like, that's my game of the year. That's what I spent oh, most time on. Counter Strike. That's why I'd be all over. Counter Strike. CS Go. <laughs> yeah, Counter Strike. It wasn't released. CS last Go. Year. <laughs> um, came out about four years ago, but CS yeah, Go. Yeah, it still wins. That should have been a persistent game. Um, I I would have done what I said for my no, game of the year originally. League has Grand such a crazy following that that would never. Would be beaten for most persistent. Would you still say, 
Last of Us remastered. Would be um, in terms still. of the most fun, because I hadn't played the one on PS3, from a completely personal perspective, mm, that's um, true. I completely agree if people don't agree with this, but mm. from my gaming you perspective... agree if people don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> from my gaming perspective, that was the most fun I had yeah. and what blew me away the most. So yeah, uh, Last of Us remaster. Okay. Yeah. That was phenomenal. Did you um, play the remaster? Oh yeah. Did you complete it? Um yes. I I, did. I just remember walking into like the prom room and like walking where the drafts are and just thinking, Oh my god. Like, the prom room. Yeah, where oh, what, in the, the DLC. The... No. Did you play the... the DLC for it? Because no. that was included as well. Oh. Play mm. the DLC. Left behind. It includes did the it former it years. In the remaster? Yeah. Really? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's included. Fuck, yeah, I play it that. In. I'm stealing your oh, coffee, mate. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's what um, Ashley Johnson actually went up to collect the award for. I think best story, hmm. and uh, yeah, that that won basically. I didn't realize, and probably because I didn't pay any attention or I forgot, I didn't realize that Ellie was gay. Really? Is gay? What her character or or her, her voice character. actor? Her character. Oh. With who? Uh, well, and in, in, you'll find out in the DLC. Mm. Well, it's just oh, well, her relationship as a younger girl with another girl. Just <laughs> no, nothing like bad. She's like fourteen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing bad involved. It's just like her relationship and how she was very good friends, and they just, you know. Yeah. What got is on? the best no, game? Yeah, they got. <laughs> but they didn't get it on. But they got on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What is the best game you've ever played? Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I've ever played. <sighs> I'm kind of like throwing it out there right now. It's it's very tricky because well I th- I think. Batman Arkham Asylum is, is one that I just want all over. Um, <laughs> so no, I, I, to be fair, that's, that's very very close. Actually, I think I think to be fair, that's it's next to that or Metal Gear Solid on the GameCube. Uh, yeah, and of course there've been great games like GTA and everything else, and amazing. Yeah, still amazing games, but the best ever game, and the game that I again, I think yeah, Batman Arkham Asylum. It's a game that I platinumed, I think, in a day or in nine hours. Really? Yeah. Uh. I knew yeah. where everything was. I knew where to go. <laughs> I was it. like a computer on that game. Wow. I was like, doo, 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 and I just sat in my room and I played it on another account just to prove I could do it. And I beat all the challenge maps. I did everything in such a short space of time. And if only I had the recorder equipment I have today to record that. Because yeah. that would be amazing. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so that's that's the one game that I was just totally amazed by. And yeah, it just sticks with me to this day. I love you, Rocksteady. You're amazing. <laughs> Joel, I'm or Freya because you're from a girl. my. It's okay. He's a girl too. That's good. Yeah, I'm taking the reins here. Um, from a child's perspective, Simpsons Hit and Run. But yeah. if I went and played that again today, I'd be like, oh, that's kind of AIDS. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. Um, so, but no, that game was absolutely amazing. Yeah. However, I'm gonna say Minecraft. Oh, Holy yeah. fuck! I got that in the beta, and I sat and we created a shitty little server, me and my brother, and we went on there. And our minds were blown. That is actually you on literally somewhere. Minecraft. You get thrown into a world, and it's like, holy crap, it's day. We've got to get all these resources. We've got to build a house before night comes. The zombies are coming. It's so basic, but it's so amazing. And that's why it made so much money, and it's still as popular as it is. I do appreciate it. It is yeah, amazing. It is like I'd, I can't... Re- if I went back to it now, it's kind of hit and miss. I, I can still enjoy it on certain maps. Um, I it's think... funny you say it's hit and miss because it's similar to your you know, favourite ever game, which is hit and run. <laughs> but my favourite ever game is Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, one as a child is hit and run. Since That's true. Run, so it's sort of like there are, oh, I guess. There are actually uh, some videos of John and Theo uh, recording Minecraft. Very, very... Are there like videos that pedophiles would normally look at? Or what? I don't, there is no face cam, so I, oh, good, I good, hope good. not. Good. But yeah, I, I, I came across them the other day and oh, they're pretty hilarious. That's cute. <laughs> I can't remember them. You are, you're building a house in a tree and then your mum calls Otherwise you down for dinner and then you have house. to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so your yeah, mum says to have to feed your dog. That was it. Do you hear, was like, do you hear my mum say Tyler. that? Yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. I was like, okay, that's wow. definitely John with you because you sound so different. Yeah, that made me laugh a lot. Is that my TR Mugshot channel? I think so, yeah. Shout out to TR Mugshot. <laughs> Shout out to TR Mugshot. <laughs> and what's your best ever game? I feel like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Just because yeah. that is when I got into gaming. Oh, well, that was the contender. first campaign that I was ever allowed to complete with my dad. 
and he was like you can't listen to any of this you can't ask me what any of it means you can just do it with me and wow. then I completely ruined it at the end do you, did you play it? I played segments but I didn't really complete it. it no it looked cool but yeah of I, course I was there on the playground as everyone else was talking about it as, you know as, as like yeah. most like pop culture stuff like major stuff everyone's talking about it if you're not doing it you're not talking yeah basically yeah and I kind of basically you're meant to get married to the girlfriend right in the end but I spoilers kind of, to those yeah. who haven't played <laughs> seven this years very later. old game um, actually more than seven years oh god, god it must be like god. ten or something okay that must be really old um that's so stupid because I was me. like I was like eight when it came out Tell um me. Yeah, um, and yeah, you meant Old to marry man. the girlfriends in the end, but I kind of killed her with an RPG, and then my dad got really angry and said I could never play in the campaign again. <laughs> so yeah, but the multiplayer, <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was so horrible. I was playing with my friends, and I was like, oh my god, what have we done? And we just ruined it completely. Wow. Um, but I think the cheats and just just the free roam because that was one of the first games that i think was had such a massive map yeah that didn't have to load you didn't have to preload and think because you remember on vice city and not vice city is it vice city yeah um where when you went over the bridge it had to load that part of the map uh, and i thought yeah. that was amazing going over the bridge and it not having to load and it just being it wasn't amazing graphics i love vice in the city. slightest but oh, no I, I, oh, vice city is close city to my city favorite game as well yeah i think yeah i just i don't know in the cheats the cheats wow. were amazing and the fact that you can play multiplayer in select places mm. of the maps. That is um, a really GTA good. first. Yeah. Oh, wow. And last. Amazing. Uh, split screen, yeah. Oh, you can't do that anymore. No, split screen? But it wasn't split screen. No, it sorry, was, not on the split same screen. screen. You couldn't go a certain distance away from each other. So if somebody was getting pushed by a car weird. and then another person was getting like on going on a train the other way, the player two would just die. That's weird. Really weird. That's it's such still, a weird way. It what? was so weird. No, it's, it's, it's like still playing, cool though. It's it, like, yeah, it was really good. It's better than not being able to do it. Yeah, but there was only two places on the map that you could do it and that was nowhere near your house spawn because obviously you can't choose where you spawn. You spawn your house. It was a pain in the ass trying to get there. You had to get on an airplane like get get to the airport get on an airplane do that whole cut scene that took ages and you had to kill yourself when you got there then you had to go from the hospital and you had to drive like a certain way and it was just like I remember I said that's it. quite a cool thing it's what it's like with any game is it? it's like with GTA 5 and the aliens and the finding all these parts yeah. and yeah that's brilliant I do like I that it. about Rockstar games they just put so much stuff in there that no one knows about until years later yeah which is uh, really fun oh um, would you want well, I guess probably Minecraft obviously has been remastered, but would you want your favourite game to be remastered again, do you think? Um, I mean, Ar Arkham Asylum, I, I have no doubt it will more than likely get remastered. So, mm. yeah, it's only because once Arkham Knight is out, they're not going to have a lot else to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's going to make sense for them financially and, well, just for the fans as well to give it to someone to remaster, reskin, and be like, yeah, we'll just package it out. Yeah. Sell a ton of copies. Yeah, I'd like to undress. But remaster. yeah, I know you'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> don't know if it's ever a Hit possibility. Hit and run would be pretty funny, actually. That'd be quite cool. Hit and run would be jokes. Mm. But I don't Hit know whether it'd be the same sort of thing. Trouble is, it's um, it's it's one of these games is actually quite limited. But mm. when it, it's basically, as I was a kid, I was never allowed Grand Theft Auto. So Simpsons Hit and Run was my <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. <laughs> you could free roam. You could get. You could steal cars. But stealing cars, you never stole a car. You just got in the passenger seat and then controlled the car. <laughs> it was amazing. You could like drive over flaming fires. And <laughs> yeah. Flaming fires. Flaming fires. Flaming, flaming tires. tires yeah. Did any of you play the Simpsons game? Like on, on PS3. And yeah. Because I played Hit and Run and I was like, oh, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be brilliant. And it really wasn't. Did so you ever play Simpsons skateboarding? Did that you ever play cool. Simpsons yes. wrestling? Simpsons no. wrestling. Yeah. That existed? Yes. What? Yes, yeah, no. when you were in a ring and you could use everyone. <laughs> I've got it on PS1. It might be on my drawer, actually. Got it on PS4? PS1. Oh, PS1. <laughs> oh, PS4. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, it just came out. <laughs> New release? <laughs> game of the year. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> um, that's brilliant. Um, no, the Simpsons game, what, when it put you into alternate realities and like yeah. the world wars and all this stuff as Homer and, and... Lisa, yeah. And you, you were in di lots of stuff. different situations, yeah. like, episodes. I remember there was one that was really difficult where you had to, like, jump across these, like, lava yeah. and stuff. But yeah. It, it, and I mean, then there was, was, like, the open world cool. bit where you could go yeah. around Springfield. And you had to, like, That was the most like, exciting part points. for me. Yeah. Because then I'm just looking at all my favourite locations mm. and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in the show. And I'm, oh, I can go here. Oh, can I see that? Oh, my God, that's so cool. <laughs> and, yeah, that's that was my favourite bit. Yeah, that was good. And walking inside the house and just looking at everything. Yeah, that was good. 
fucked that the campaign just wasn't yeah up to it this time. well hopefully we'll do another one sometime soon yeah like a be better cool. one uh Joel and myself went to a Warner Brothers press event, which we can now talk about. Uh, because the embargo is gone. Yes, yeah, so we can. Uh, we played Mortal Kombat X. Really good. It is really, really good. And I uh, met the producer, or one of the senior producers. And we also played Lego Jurassic Park, which covers the first three films and the new film coming out on June 12th. Also really good. Which is quite fun, yeah. Lego game is a Lego game is a Lego game is a Lego game is a Lego game. It's a Lego game. They're all it's a Lego same, game. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like when I was talking, you can see the interview that I conducted with the associate producer, Tim Wildman. You can find it on youtube.com forward slash start replay. And I did actually ask him, uh, how have they continued to innovate? Or, you know, how do you move forward with a Lego game? Because it's pretty much the same thing. You just break stuff, you build stuff, you move on. Um and then I also said to him, please do Back to the Future and uh, a proper Batman one that re- revolves all the films. And he was like, well, yeah, no point, you know, no, take it. So, yeah. Do you like, I mean, you've never played a Lego game, have you? I've watched a bit Freya? of the Star Wars one. Crap. It looked okay. cool. That is your, that's like your generation. Yeah. Even more so than mine. Yeah. I and need to Joel, buy a PS2 to Joel. go back and play. Um, no, no, you don't need to do that because PlayStation Now is going to be in beta soon for you to try really? in the UK and will be really? out in the spring. And yeah. can you play PS2 well. games? Uh, I, I believe... I think you can. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah that you should we'll be able to play to classic PS4. games. Mm. I need to get a PS4. I'd, it's weird though, because I haven't got to pay like quite a lot to rent a game. I'm not too sure yet in the UK for how much it's going to be. I'd rather I think it it's be, be like realistic, a, to be fair. A Netflix style service. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I, I actually think it should be included in your PlayStation Plus subscription. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Bastards. Um, like, how but, much money are Sony but making? To be, on to be fair, it will kind of be a, a Netflix type service. Because if you think about Netflix now, is like £7 a month, right? So that's £84 a year. Mm. Um, so, no, that's wrong, isn't it? <laughs> that's totally wrong. £7 a month. 84. 84. Is it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, it is. No, sorry. I was getting really confused. 6.99, actually. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So anyway. 60. No, 83. 88. Roughly. No, that's wrong. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? 83, oh, No, sorry, yeah. 83, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, getting... that's wrong, no. <laughs> getting confused for all these figures now. Um, yeah, so that's like 80 whatever um, per year. I think in the US it was like $40 for three months. So to be realistic, you know, um, for, $40 for three months. I was aiming for Freya. <laughs> Did you miss? I think so it bad. might have hit her mic. <laughs> it hit, it it hit, hit your you. mic. I did it. Yeah, I think it hit didn't it? <laughs> it? I heard something go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, anyway, PlayStation Now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you kids, you're a bunch of kids. It's like being in the cinema, like. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then you duck and you giggle to your best mate, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a weird way of giggling. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to make too much noise. You're in a quiet cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in the cinema. When I used to go underneath the chairs, and all of a sudden I'd be like across the other side of the cinema because they were flat cinemas. So I'd be underneath the chairs, and all of a sudden I'd be like over there. You went we were in a flat here. cinema. Hang on, remember he was yeah, from one the bloody without, um without like he came from the sticks. Did well, it's I like just? showcase. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's, it's like showcase, you know. Um, that's yeah, they're oh, a bit yeah. more like, ever so slightly sort of sloped, yeah, but like not not the tiered though, instead. Yeah. yeah, so they weren't we, tiered we or have. anything. Yeah. Imagine being sat sometime. Some yeah. tall bastards. As I was going to say. That is a bad thing about Showcase, actually. <laughs> Sorry, Showcase. Um, PlayStation Now. I think, yeah, if it's $40 for three months, I mean, that's roughly like mm, £20. £19.99, let's say, for three months' content. Well, it's like, actually, yeah, then, it'd probably be twenty nine ninety nine because these companies never do a fair well, yeah. rate of... Uh, but let's say it is fair. Then realistically, again, that's £80 a year for you to play a ton of classic titles on the go. It's not bad. Yeah, I guess Could that's the worse. cost of like two full yeah, price. Yeah, two main games. That's that's and at maximum, maybe two and a half. The shame is that you don't... Adjustments. I guess... Maybe three, yeah. maybe four. I guess it's the right way to do it, like Five a, times a, a subscription service. You don't want to be buying you, individual games. You don't have to pay for PSN, do you? Yeah. yeah. You have to pay for it now. £40 a year. You've always need... Well, yeah, on PS3, you didn't. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, because that's what everybody was like. Oh, PS3 is better because you don't have to pay for it. Oh, well, I didn't realize well, that. You, you you could pay for PlayStation Plus, but yeah, just you give you free for, games, like, not, Xbox not for internet as such. Not, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can play always online games without a subscription, which is good. Okay, Whereas on the Xbox, good. you can't. Yeah, you can't. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, so it's still do not you remember free to play. that game? <laughs> it was like um, oh fuck. Was, oh, I know that game. Yeah. Oh <laughs> fuck! It's called uh, Oh fuck the sequel. <laughs> I have. It's like a Marvel game, where it's a uh, MMORPG that came out on console. They mean DC Universe Online. Online. That is oh. the one. It's not a Marvel game. <laughs> oh, same, same <laughs> bacon. Thinking, DC it's Marvel. It's like a Marvel game same. that has Batman in. <laughs> Batman is Superman. Marvel, isn't he? Nope. <laughs> uh, anyhow, you bought me. that on. You bought the full price game, so I think Richard did. He went and bought the full price yeah. game for forty pounds on PS3. Yeah. You put it in, and then asked you to pay a monthly fee to then play oh, yeah, the no, game. Yeah, and then they and quit. he he returned it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I just bought oh, this yeah, game no, for like, a shit ton of money. Like, yeah. especially when you're a kid, yeah. that's a lot of money. Um, and then you have to go and bloody pay even more money. It's like it doesn't that's work like crazy. that. You retards. Sorry, part of my French. No, it makes sense. It's like Skyrim, oh, Tamriel Online. Yeah, it's now what... it's now free to play. What? Oh, is it Ta- Tamriel yeah. on <laughs> Tamriel Unlimited or whatever, isn't it? Or <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. It's the Elder called, Scrolls like... Online. Tamriel. No, I can fucking tell you. What? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna Tamriel show you this. Sh- I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I'm gonna so show you. So I'm not made to look like an idiot. To chat and shit. I'm not chatting crap. You're probably not actually. <laughs> Definitely not. I I hope I'm not anyway. Um, the Elder Scrolls Online. Tamriel Unlimited. There we go. The Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, Tamriel Unlimited. I know it's Tamriel. Yeah, but that's just the DLC. Is the actual main game is no. the Elder Scrolls Online. It's got nothing to do with Tamriel Unlimited. Well, anyway, that, the game is now free to play. Yeah. So. So the you're whole game. Still wrong. But it's still. It's still kind of right. Tamriel. It's just like the full package. Yeah. Um. But it is now free to play. It's available in June. Um, on PlayStation 3 and other such game stuff. Um, funnily enough, it'll be two years since I would have seen it. I think I saw it at E3 2013. I can't remember now, actually. I can't remember if it was 2013 or the year before. Um, but anyway, it's been a long time. And now it's free to play. So that's good. I don't get the point in spending £15 no. a month to play this game that you've already paid. The only yeah. game that that actually works for Ridiculous. is World of Warcraft. Yeah, People still do so that. Big, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do that for League, do you? Uh, I believe League of Legends is a free to play, but you po- pay possibly upgrades, buy to win. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, buy to win. Sense. Imagine if Destiny was buy to win. <laughs> or, or it, imagine if Destiny you could just it. buy to get uh, legendary engrams. Pay well, there's £10. a worrying <sighs> increase in the amount of buy to win games. Yeah. <clears throat> like Hearthstone. To be fair with Hearthstone, it's a, like a fantastic game and you can play for free and still I've never have a played. great time. I don't want you should no get it on it your um, iPhone. They did win something actually at the Bath oh, yeah, and then so somebody it. came up to me and said, "Do you want to interview these people for Hearthstone?" And I was like, mm, "I'm alright, thanks." <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what it is. Thanks, bye. <laughs> I don't want something. I but didn't really enjoy it. I appreciate that. It's like a sort of. It's made by say people as well of Warcraft, yeah. I struggle to um yeah Blizzard yeah. I struggle to get to grips with like sitting down at a computer and playing it, but being able to just go around someone's house. And take your tablet and say, I don't know, your parents are nattering away to your nan and you're a bit bored. Being able to pull out a bloody tablet and play Hearthstone. Hey, nan, do you want to play some Hearthstone? Oh, yes, please. Uh... Hey, my nan's 40. <laughs> really? No! <laughs> no. How, how old would that make my mum? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, 24 or something. Yeah, something like that. Oh, God, that's hideous. Sorry, my uh, mum had me at uh, six. Wow. Sounds good, right? Amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, we've talked a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, Bit of a mess. Oh, well, it's, it's fine. I won't need to edit this one. It's just going to go straight out to all you <laughs> lovely listeners. Um, yeah, he always moans about, like, oh, I work so hard. I edit all <laughs> these videos. Well, look at him. Mm-hmm. He's said it here on the podcast. He's just gone, I don't even have to edit. It's going to go straight out to all you lovely <laughs> listeners. So uh, next time, and then time... we get to the improv section, and <laughs> 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 that's not fun. <laughs> no, there's, uh, there's, there's not going to be any improv tonight. Wait. 
Yay. on this session. Um, instead, you're going to have uh, a wealth of interviews um, edited together for your pleasure, so you can listen to uh, what I ask people um, and what they have to say, um, including the likes of Linford Christie and Andrea Deck, who is the voice actor of Ellen Ripley in Alien Isolation, Tim Schafer, David Arnold, the composer on Quantum, not Quantum of Solace, Casino Royale, um, and the Charlotte TV series, and a few other people um, who I managed to speak to. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Linford Christie. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he there? He was presenting an award. Really? He was as confused as we I were. He was an athlete. <laughs> yeah, he is. What's he got to do with gaming? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. They just got him for some reason, and, and we were interviewing him. He was really like down to earth. I'm just like, Linford, what are you doing? He's, <laughs> he's quite a good, like, um, TV personality. Yeah, I think. no, I think that's pretty much like the only reason. But Tim, <laughs> Tim Schaefer, who was up for an award, didn't win an award, but he presented an award. So oh. and when we were, when I was interviewing him alongside a few other people, I was like, Tim, I wish we could say congratulations, but <laughs> unfortunately not. He said, Ah, oh, well, you never know, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Destiny won Game of the Year. Very controversial. Haven't played it since launch. Blah right. blah blah. Um. And I think that's it for episode 11. Um, of course, don't go just yet. Actually, I'm not going to say goodbye yet. I'm just going to say, now here are the interviews in a compilation. Okay, so I'm going to take you through um, a few excerpts from all the interviews that I conducted at the Video Game BAFTAs, talking with the presenters, talking with the winners, and first up, we have the Far Cry 4 game director, when I try to push him a little further as to what he's working on next, and how he found about breaking new ground with music and working with Cliff Martinez. So just a, a little bit of a comment here from him, and here we go. Hello, uh, just a quick question. Hi. Moving forward um, into like the, what the future holds, how... How do you go about finding, would you stick with Cliff or would, would, how do you go about finding something new with the music side of things? How do you go about finding something where, which hasn't done, been done before, possibly? I guess? Well, at the moment I'm working on an announced project and unfortunately I can't talk to you about anything involved in it. I'm really sorry. No, that's fine. Um, but in terms of the creativity with the music and pushing it in a direction where it, you get a lot more character from it, how do you go about doing that? from your perspective and, and sort of focusing on the whole? I think it's like I said to one of the guys I spoke to just a minute ago, it's really about getting the right talent in the right roles. Securing Cliff was uh, a really good win for us and uh, making sure we have uh, people like that on board is uh, absolutely critical for us. So I guess we could have Far Cry 5 confirmed there. <laughs> of course, I'm only joking. Uh, next up, we have a little chat with the composer on the TV series Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. A little bit off gaming, but still quite interesting. And what his thoughts are for the upcoming, I say upcoming, quite a while off still, but the Christmas special that they have going for 2015 and where he's headed with the music and its direction. David, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? I sort of ex express my love as well for your music, I have to say. I'm um, just a huge fan of uh, what you and Michael Price did on the Sherlock oh, music. Thank you very much. No, it's, uh, really, I, I listen to film soundtracks and things every day. When I'm commuting to work or cycling, and it's, it provides me with such a different emotional palette, as you could say. Um, I, are you working on the special that they're doing for yes. Sherlock? Or? Yeah, we're, um, I think we've seen it at the end of next week. Uh, and then you're going to start. Read, read the script. Uh, There's a couple of things we had to do for pre-records, that, things that you see in picture. Uh, but yeah, then we start in anger. I think at the end of next week. <laughs> How do you move forward to find something new and to obviously keep that tone of the main score in there, but break through and find something so emotionally compelling that will lend itself to obviously what's going to be quite a special special. Uh, well, that, I mean, that has to be there before we do anything about it. I mean, if there's not anything emotionally compelling in the show, then writing emotionally compelling music won't make you care any more about it. You know, it's a great fallacy of it. If it's not there, then it ain't there. So, you know, we've been lucky in that the shows so far have been compelling and inspiring. Uh, and what's interesting about the uh, the Christmas, the special, if it is at Christmas, I'm not sure, but... Um, is that obviously you know it's a slightly different environment, uh, and so it, out of all of them, it feels like it lends itself to a slightly different approach. Uh, how we achieve that, I'm not altogether sure yet until we actually see the show. But I've got a bunch of ideas, 
uh, which I think are quite interesting and intriguing. And I think it'll be more of a standalone thing, you know, yeah. rather than a rather than an extension of, of the first nine. Self-contained in the sense. Uh, yes, uh, because it is a you know it's a very different kind of world that they've created. Um, uh, but then I think we go straight into the next three episodes the after that. I think towards the end yeah. of the year. Um, yeah, but this is this is a fascinating, mind-bending uh, special, uh, and it's a sort. Well, it needs to move forward every time, you know. And I think it needs to excite. It needs to be a little bit unexpected, uh, you know. I mean, they've released, you know, a couple of Images shots of, you know. So, so, so you already know that it's like, well, what? How is how is that going to work? How can that happen? How can that be? Uh, and obviously, knowing that you know Moriarty turns up at the end of the uh, of episode yeah, of nine, the, the next question is, oh, well, what? How the hell did that happen? So you're immediately, you know, you're going into this show thinking, how the hell can any of this stuff happen? But From you know, your side as well, but, yeah, it must be quite a bit. Of a yeah, but now I know because I've read it. Oh, you know, right, so I mean, because now I know what happens and why it happens. So I mean, this is the great joy of it. Is that you know. It's, it was a bit like when I, when, I, when I worked on the Olympics and everyone was expecting it to be a disaster. And we go, no, it's going to be brilliant. Or when we cast Daniel Craig in Casino Royale and everyone goes, like, he's not right for Bond. And then he was brilliant. Um, you know, people say, you know, people with Sherlock, it's like, well, how, is, how can he come back? How can that happen? How can come back? And I'm hoping at the end of it, they say, oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for providing such emotional moments yeah. for myself with well, the music. Thank you very much. And especially I didn't give anything away, did I? I no, didn't, you didn't give anything, anything away. No, no, no just uh, yeah, anticipation. Yeah. And I very much look forward to seeing good. where you and Michael take it next. Yeah, I think and, it's going to be good. Um, I think it's going to be good. I look forward to just sitting there and being enveloped and then downloading the score yeah. and sort of just... There'll be new music, there'll be old music, and there'll oh. be new treatments of old music. But, um, yeah, it'll be Sherlock through and through, whatever happens. Amazing. Thanks, All man, right. for speaking with me. I appreciate it. Look forward to it. Thanks. So there we have it, shrouded in secrecy, but I am very much looking forward to it to see where David goes with the score, and I hope you are all too, uh, waiting for the Christmas special at the end of this year. Up next, we have Ashley Johnson, and now I've sort of entered a bit of a group, I guess you could say, reporters, so we all just stuck our mics in there, got in a few questions, so alongside my questions, there are a few more which I find quite interesting um, with answers, so I hope you enjoy it. If, there, if you were actually ever asked to return to the character of Ellie, something you love so much, would you do it again? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I would. <laughs> Amazing. Ashley, I have to be, again, a little bit cheeky in questioning and just say, do you have any idea of how you might portray Ellie as an older woman? As a, yeah, perhaps. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, Maybe with, a, with Joel in like a wheelchair and something. Like <laughs> <laughs> Wheeling him around this devastation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, anything's possible, I guess. But um, I think uh, it just depends on if they, they want to revisit the story again. And, and you know, if Ellie could kind of go either way. Like, she could... You know, obviously the end of the game says a lot of where, you know, clearly he lied to her. So I don't know if you guys have played it, but yeah. hopefully you know what it is. But, um, you, know, <laughs> you know, yeah, so it's like you don't know how she's going to take that. You know, and if they ever went back to it, like, would she be mad at him? Would she be okay with it? It's... There's many places you could go, so I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, if it happens. Yeah, thank you. Next up, we had Linford Christie, who was actually presenting an award for the best sports game, and that went to Ollie Ollie 2. Whilst uh, Linford doesn't play many games, we did uh, nonetheless have a pretty funny chat uh, amongst a lot of us there. I'm Linford Christie. I've just presented Oli Oli with the best sport awards. Okay. Have you played any of the games in the sports category? Mm, not I mean, track and field, if you call it that, you know, but I think there's a need for a really good one. Okay, okay. You know, but stick, stick man, if you call stick man, is that in the sporting category? <laughs> He's on a skateboard. <laughs> Linford, if you had to create a game, what would it be about and why, I guess? I think it'd have to be, of course, some sort of track and field game because there's a need for one. There really is a need for one. There's a, you know, I suppose everyone's getting sporty now and it'd be some sort of game where the kids can go out and try try you know to beat whoever is at the the top of the game so maybe like a nintendo related one where they have the wii remotes on like strapped to their legs and they're just running around you're talking i think i, I, I think there's definitely a neat one they can get exercise at the same time and you could do the promotion for it be on the box cover well we can go into business together <laughs> i'll slip you my number in a set we can hook up no just slip me the checkbook <laughs> So there you have it. If uh, Linford Christie wants to enter the gaming scene, I guess a track and field game would be the one 
that we would see. Uh, following up next, we have Andrea Deck, who voiced Ellen Ripley from Alien Isolation. Now, we didn't exactly who, know who she was from a from the look of her anyway, so she came over. Uh, she said hi. She said uh, why she was there and what she was doing. And she was presenting an award. And then she said she voiced Ellen Ripley. And I just went, oh, it's fantastic because I love that game. And it was a real shame they didn't actually win Game of the Year. So, yeah. But these are a few words that we had with her nonetheless. Uh, my name is Andrea Deck. I just presented the award for Artistic Achievement. And I'm here basically because I voiced Amanda Ripley in the Alien Isolation <laughs> game. <laughs> I, was like, I love that oh game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reaction I want. How do you yeah. feel about Alien Isolation not getting the award that they were up for? <laughs> Well, they just won audio. Oh, okay. 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 So it's very hard for us because we're over here. We're, we're, I know. We're, I know. we're like, hello. <laughs> no, I know. I snuck out to watch their like acceptance speech, and obviously, audio is like really excited about. Yeah. But yeah, no. It's does that include your work then, the audio? Um, you like to think that it does. I, I like to think that it really <laughs> does. Mainly rely on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you played any of the games in your category that you just presented? Um, I haven't played any of the games in my category specifically, but I watched my husband play them. Okay. The uh, the sort of controllers have gotten so intense and like specific since like the Nintendo DS games, which is what I'm used to. Chris, just told us exactly the same. Oh, really? He was like, these new games are so complicated. They're so complicated. Yeah. But I actually, they're so like engaging that I can sit next to my husband on the sofa and watch them for like three hours. So. That's, that's how I've gotten to know those games. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple of questions, yeah. if I may, please. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and ask, yeah. if you were given the opportunity to come back to the role in a uh -huh. sequel, would uh -huh. you do it? For sure. Easy. Easy question. Absolutely. I mean, they were so awesome to work with, and it was such a pleasure to play that character that like, I would do it in a heartbeat. Obviously, I would want the story to be good, first and foremost, but in the hands of that team, I, I think it would be a no-brainer. With the announcement of Neil uh, Blomkamp's uh, new Alien movie uh, yeah. being made now, yeah. have you, uh, you know, given any interest in being in the movie as Ellen's? Uh, you know? I mean, I would love to be given the opportunity to be in that movie. I, I like, well, like I said, I mean, the the story is is awesome and I think it it's, will make a shamelessly awesome film. So, yeah, I mean, I think I'm the obvious choice. Okay, we'll send this to the correct people and uh, see what happens. Yeah. So there we go. One awesome, awesome lady. And I hope to hear her again as Ellen Ripley in, uh, in the sequel, if they ever do it. Uh, next up is just a, a quick few words from the Oli Oli dev team. Uh, their sequel, Oli Oli 2, is out on PlayStation Network now and free to PlayStation Plus subscribers. So go there and download it. I've yet to play it myself because I haven't had enough time, but I did ask them the question of a sequel, which sort of backfired on me. It's happening. Strong. Talking which, I'm sort of the, uh, the cheeky person on this team of asking, so how's development on a sequel going? We finished it, it and it came out last week. week. <laughs> <laughs> Smart answer. <laughs> Oli Oli 3, any ideas? Not at the moment. 3D, <laughs> Morpheus, Oculus Rift. Oli Oli Oli. So there we go. Not quite confirmed, but 3D, Oculus Rift, all the, all the trimmings, everything attached to a sequel. Yeah, no, fantastic dev team. And uh, yeah, just, just awesome to see so many uh, indie devs at the awards win lots of times, which is fantastic. Up. Uh, Next, uh, we have a few people from the Minecraft console edition, the dev team who made that because they won the best family game. So here are a few words from them. Uh, first of all, hello and congratulations. Um, and my question is, how important do you think it is for video games in general to be uh, maybe more creative and, and less you know, linear and oh, I'm just going to shoot this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to lounge there and not be creative at all and just use my gun. How important do you think it is for games to just unleash their creativity a little bit more and be stuck in the dark ages? It's a big question, I know. Good luck. It is a big question for such an evening. Um, you know, obviously the example is Minecraft that we're here for and what it provides is a sandbox of ideas and a, a, a possibilities. And... Of course, there's plenty of space for people to have a channeled game experience. And there are rules and regulations within Minecraft which allow people to have some channeled experience. But it's, it's boundless. 
and uh, from a from a I don't know. Uh, people can create their own stories. People can create their own gaming aspects. People can create their own villages. Anything, and and it's just um, unlocking imagination is is the key to the whole of Minecraft, and that's that's kind of what is so cool about it. One awesome team of people. Ah, uh, really, really cool. And last but not least, I have a great interview with Tim Schafer, the legendary uh, video game veteran, as you could say, who created the likes of Brutal Legend with Jack Black and also Grim Fandango, the 1998 classic that was recently remastered and came out on PlayStation 4, PC and Vita. Wait, that's crazy. That's really going to be multiple people. Hello. Hi. Okay, please, everyone, shout your question at the same time. Ah. Oh, God, <laughs> everyone's... It's all happening so, now. For the benefit of the recording, could you say who you are and what you've just come from doing? <laughs> Hello, my name is Tim Schaefer. I'm the president of Double Fine Productions. I'm here to present an award. What? Did that, did that show up? Hold on. Got to... Tim Schaefer, S-C-H-A-F-E-R. <laughs> So you just presented the award for... Uh, best Design. Because we have Best Design. Any Best Design. And uh, I... God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was uh, Shadow of Mordor. Shadow, Shadow of Mordor. Thank you for bringing it to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have you played any of the games in the category? Yeah, I actually... I think... I always... I like, Hohokum and Mordor were my two game of the years that last year. Okay. I played the heck out of Mordor. Um, they're totally different. One's about next stabbing orcs and... Yeah and Mordor is totally different. Tim, firstly, hello. Um, and I wish I could say congratulations, but... Hmm. Let's just say that in case there was an error. Yeah, of you course. Thank you, I knew I was going to win that. That's great. Now, my question set uh, seems to be a little bit cheeky tonight, but first of all, I'm going to uh, just say that I played Grim Fandango for the first time the other day, and um, I really liked it. That's so um, cheeky. But, no, that's my first question. That's my first uh, so, <laughs> but I, no, I'm just wondering. When I was playing through it, I found it really hard to progress. And even with the internet and a walkthrough, how did people play that game in 1998 with no internet? No idea. I, people were smarter back then. You know, the great, the greatest generation. They really. No, it wasn't that long ago. I, I you know, I actually playing the game. I kind of sometimes wondered that myself. I was like, this puzzle is really hard. How do we expect people to get that? Um, but the part of the reason is people didn't. A lot of people, in the old days, we were like, no one is going to finish this game. And sometimes we thought that. Uh, that's why we did the easy mode in Monkey Island 2. Uh, but, but a lot of it is like the puzzles, there are hints if you keep talking to people and dig down. Most of them are kind of like hinted at if you keep exploding, exploring all the dialogues. So that's a bit of a way to add longevity to your game. People don't know where to go and how to proceed. Yeah. Yeah, so we made the first half of Broken Age. The first half is always easier than the second half. People were like, this is too easy. And then we made Grim, and they're like, this is too hard. Basically, adventure game fans are hard to please. And now for my serious question. If you ever had uh, enough uh, development time to do it, would you ever dip back into the Grim Vandango universe? Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard because of how Grim ended. I mean, it was a really rich and full world, but I feel like that character had such a, like a complete progression, and I feel like he's... He's done with, and so it's like I don't know if I'd want to go back in that role with someone who wasn't Manny. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. Like all the other games, like a lot of them at least, like Psychonauts or Full Throttle. Or, like you can, you can just, you can just imagine there was. I mean, Brutal Legend has stuff already designed because we had to cut that game in half to get it done two years late. So yeah, well thank you, well thank you. But that, yeah, that game, that's a lot easier to imagine going forward with that or Psychonauts. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's it. Those are all the interviews. I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, I think that's everything we need to say. Goodbye, Joel. Bye, everybody. Thank you for your ever ongoing stubbornness. Freya, thank you. Bye bye. Thank for you your for patience. Uh, it's been <laughs> unrelenting. Kind of patience. <laughs> kind of patience. My patience was. Yeah, I cannot believe the roof. that. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. You can, of course. Head to startweplay.com for previews, headset reviews, eventually, uh, and other such stuff. Head to youtube.com forward slash start replay to subscribe to us. Follow us on Twitter at start replay and find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash start replay media. We're also on Instagram. Find us there, start replay. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, head to iTunes and type in start replay and subscribe to us and listen to us there. It's all very exciting. I've been Josh Ball. Goodbye. Toodle pip. Bye.